Hi everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Welcome to my film and TV channel. And one of our posters versus the movie battles today. Yeah, so uh, do I need to tell you what the film is? Uh, <laughs> not really, is it? Hey, there you go. We'll have a talk about that uh, poster in a minute. But uh, yeah... Uh, I like that poster. I do. I do like that poster. Don't forget uh, these posters are available at my little website as well. There will be a link put on screen, and there's links in the descriptions below, etc. So if you do like this poster, I've got, I've got it on my little website anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to have a look at We Were Soldiers today, uh, the poster and the movie. So a little bit about the movie, and uh, obviously uh, a little bit of information, background, a little bit of trivia, etc. And uh, how it did, how it rated, and does it still stand up? I've watched this uh, film as I'm recording this just just a, a day or two ago again. Uh, watched it again on Amazon Prime, so it's very, very obviously could be available on various streams. Just check your different streaming sites. Uh, this is currently available as I'm recording this in uh, late February 2021. This is available on Amazon Prime, but it's uh, obviously these films they sort of come and go, don't they, on Netflix and Amazon, etc., etc. So check anyway, please. If you're new to this channel and you're going to enjoy this little battle, this little information vlog, please push that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to uh, a thousand subscribers. We're into the 700s now, so if you can help me out on that one, that would be great. And please, uh, if you do check the playlist, you'll see uh, family uh, family film reviews, uh, family family quizzes. Uh, Film reviews, uh, film TV drama reviews, lots of different stuff on there, all about movies and TV. And there's plenty of stuff on posters as well. So if that's of any interest to you, uh, it's all on there on the playlist. And you will see some stuff on my football team, Manchester City, as well. Uh, if you're interested in that, please uh, check that out. If you're not, there's, don't worry about it. Loads of film and TV stuff. But to do a Citizen channel for City Past and Present, history stuff, magazine, vlogs, quizzes on there, lots of different things for City fans. So if you know somebody who might be interested, please uh, point them in my direction. Please say there was a, a couple of links on screen for Facebook and Twitter. I do check and follow everyone back every three or four days. And uh, please uh, check that uh, website out as well. I'll have a few little bits and pieces, posters, etc, etc. Right. Comments, all the comments are welcome. Did you like this film? Let me know what you thought of this film. Uh, whether you watched it 20 years ago, well, near enough 20 years ago now, it's about 19 years as I'm recording this. Whether you watched it then or you've re-watched it recently, let me know what you think. Uh, and please, if you haven't got time for a comment, just give us a thumbs up. Right, yeah, this uh, is based on the book, of course, based on a book We Were Soldiers Once and Young, uh, back in 1992, by Lieutenant General Retired Halmore and reporter Joseph L. Galloway and it dramatises uh, the build-up and the Battle of Le Drang which took place on November 14th 1965. It's actually released in the US on the 1st of March 2002 at the cinema. Uh, I'd assume it was a similarly done in, in the UK as well, it wouldn't have been much longer after that. Stars amongst many others, uh, of course Mel Gibson in the lead role, Madeline Stowe, Greg Kinnear, Sam Elliott, Chris Klein, Kerry Russell and Barry Pepper. Uh, $75 million budget, which doesn't sound much in these days, but uh, yeah, it probably wasn't a massive budget even then, but uh, box office was $115 million. I'm not sure what figures it made back on DVD, the uh, rental there, rent it now on video and DVD. It was a time when video and DVD were both uh, out together when, when this came out, so in my little shop I had to decide how many videos to buy and how many DVDs to buy, so far more, far more expensive uh, actually in those days when you had to sort of uh, cater for both tastes well until DVD, DVD took over of course yeah 75 million budget 150 million box office so not fantastic i mean you do uh, you do reckon on a film now if you've got a budget of 75 million you need to clear about 200 million to, to sort of break even so with all the production costs and promotions etc etc so uh, not a vast amount of money so it may have struggled to make a, a profit this film in the source book, We Were Soldiers Once and Young, Halmore complains. He complains about this. He says, every damn Hollywood movie got it wrong. The director, Randall Wallace, who directed this, said that he was inspired by that comment and became determined to get it right this time. Uh, the film's final version got many of the facts of the book presented onto the film, but not entirely historically accurate. So there's a little bit of license used, obviously, as you'd expect. And certainly it's not accurate portrayal of the battle or entirely faithful to the 
the book, so obviously you, uh, I will talk about that later. But uh, yes, it's it's based on a true story. There's nothing to say this this is absolutely accurate in everything that's done. But there you go. Was it any good? Well, yeah, it was quite like, well, quite well liked by the critics. Yeah, Roger Ebert, writing for the Chicago Sun Times praised its truthful and realistic battle scenes and how it follows the characters. He went on uh, and the film out at the time, Black Hawk Down, he went on to say Black Hawk Down was criticised because the characters seemed hard to tell apart. We Were Soldiers doesn't have that problem. In the Hollywood tradition, he identifies a few key players, casts them with stars and follows their stories. Lisa Schwarzbaum from Entertainment Weekly noted its fair treatment of both sides. Uh, the writer-director bestows honour generously and politically not only on the dead and still living American veterans who fought in La Drang, but also on their families, on their Vietnamese adversaries and on the families of their adversaries too. Rarely has a foe been portrayed with such measured respect for a separate reality, which should come as a relief to critics of the enemy's facelessness in Black Hawk Down. Big vignettes of gallantry among Vietnamese soldiers and such humanising visual details as a Vietnamese sweetheart's photograph left behind in no way interfere with the primary rousing saga of a fine American leader who kept his promise to his men to leave no one behind, dead or alive. There you go. Todd McCarthy from Variety wrote, The film presents the fighting realistically, violently and relatively coherently given the chaotic circumstances. McCarthy, a few big words there, McCarthy further wrote, Mel Gibson has the closest thing to a John Wayne part that anyone's played since the Duke himself rode into the sunset. And he plays it damn well. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes, 93 fresh and 54 rotten. So a good uh, fair sprinkling of rotten reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's only, you got an overall average of 6.4 out of 10, which isn't too bad. It's a watchable rating. The audience disagreed, though, with Rotten Tomatoes. The Rotten Tomatoes audience gave it 8.2 out of 10, so they preferred it a lot, lot more. Metacritic, the other critic site we always look at when we're doing film reviews, etc. They gave it a 65% positivity rating, but did score, it did score anywhere between 2.8 out of 10, I think that's from a, a Christian science newspaper, uh, to 8 out of 10. New York Post, Jonathan Foreman, he only gave it 3.8 and he wrote, It's a shame that the book We Were Soldiers Once and Young fell into the hands of writer-director Randall Wallace. Braveheart, a filmmaker who, one of my favourite films, as you can tell, there you go, there you go. <laughs> just by quote, I didn't realise that, there we go, in the background, a filmmaker who wouldn't recognise subtlety and understatement there to attack him in the street, so yeah, uh, New York Post, Jonathan Foreman, not very kind there, uh, Washington Post, Stephen Hunter, he, he did like it a lot more, he gave it 8 out of 10 and simply wrote, you don't really watch the film, you survive it. Yeah, Internet Movie Database, Joe Public, you and me, that's all that matters in the end, isn't it? It doesn't particularly matter. It's interesting to know what the critics think, etc. Uh, an overall score of 7.2 out of 10, which isn't too shabby. That's based on over 130,000 scores and reviews that have been left. So there you go, 7.2 out of 10. Can't be too bad, can it? So what about my little thoughts? What about the battle? Who, what, what was better, the poster? Well, the film. Before I talk about the film, yeah, the poster. Well, I think that's a good poster, don't you? I think that's it. I think that's a great poster. I think it's nice colouring, the greys. It's obviously the monochrome sort of uh, uh, sort of greyish tint to it. Uh, um, it's just really done with the with the dark blue. I just think it's a really great, a great, well put together poster and a great image of Gibson, of course, there in the background and the smaller helicopters that they call Hueys. Uh, very simple, very simple poster, um, but very, very atmospheric in my opinion. That's one of one of my better. It's not the sort of thing I've. Uh, I may, I may put that. In the, I may put that on my wall at some stage. A lot of these, I say, I just tend to sort of find posters perhaps that I'm not going to sell and actually stick them up there that are good posters. But uh, yeah, that's a great. That is a very, very good poster. I do like it. I hope you know. I say it's just simple, straight, straight to the point. It says it says what it is on the tin, and especially if you're a Mel Gibson fan as well. So I'm going to score the poster for. I'm going to score the poster seven out of ten. So the the poster gets a seven from me. So on to the film. What about the film? I mean, yeah. I mean, as I said, I've literally watched this a day or two ago, and uh, there's some obviously some definitely stirring words in this. Some of the you know sort of brave heart type, if you like. Uh, uh, of that comparison has been made emotional fist pumping and heart banging and this sort of thing uh, but if you can't have it in this sort of film then uh, when can you well, let's, let's be honest about it if you can't have that in brave art you can't have that you can't have that in we were soldiers as a more modern war sort of film patriot patriotism etc then when can you have it i'm not too sure i mean the from the opening battle scene between the french and the vietnamese 
Uh, it's a really gritty and powerful start uh, to the film. And it is a little bit of a slow burn after that for perhaps the first third of the film, as obviously we get to know some of the characters, as you'd expect, as one of the critics said there. At least at least it's characters you can care about them and look out for as the, as the film progresses. Uh, and let's face it, uh, you've, got to, you've got to prepare for some of these characters who are not going to make it home, are they? So, yeah, that's that's a nice touch. And especially one of the best scenes, obviously, doesn't happen in Vietnam. It's obviously happens in in the in these with the with the women at home. Obviously, isn't it? the delivering of the telegrams is is probably one of the most effective, and it still remains one of the most effective and emotional scenes uh, in a film. And it certainly was for this. Yeah, and then later on, obviously, as the things progresses and the battle continues, there's more great great battle scenes uh, and this this is sort of also juxtap juxtaposed by the arrival of the media at the end of the battle of the although in real life the battle didn't quite end there where, where they said in this film as i said uh, license has been used but uh, yeah the juxtaposition of the of the actual media arriving on mass at the end is, is very interesting and quite well done you forget i'm saying i must have watched this 17 18 years ago and this is the first time i've re-watched it uh, so you do forget these sort of things that are quite impressive it is a straightforward telling of the horror of war no bells no whistles no fancy stuff uh, simplistically told no drug addled uh, scenarios and big big bang out bang out music you know but the odd bugle that's about it there's some good tunes in this and some good uh some good actual soundtrack to it but uh there's no, nothing in your face or or too uh as you'd expect you, you think of things now like good morning vietnam and apocalypse now and stuff like that don't you but uh yeah no bells no whistles just a very simplistically told war film as you know i don't ever get into the politics of a film i just i just watch a film for entertainment no matter what the subject matter if i want to know the true story as I said of this uh, battle or the rights and wrongs of, uh, of what's going on and what led up to this and why someone shouldn't have been there and why we should have been in there and all this sort of thing I, I sort of read I read about it or I watch documentaries I have no real interest I just watch a film for entertainment so I, I don't take any any anything from people whinging about all oh, this wasn't real and that's not real blah 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 it's it is a film for entertainment and this for me is a simple straightforward old-fashioned war film and there's nothing wrong in that, in my opinion. You know, I like a little bit of, uh, in, you know, difference uh, these days. These modern films, they add a little bit to it. But, uh, yeah, this is just from A to Z. And I think it was actually shot in order as well, which uh, obviously is good, isn't it? You know, with films, they could be shot all over the place. But the actual scenes were shot from start to finish, more or less, uh, in the right in the order of the film as well. So a simple, straightforward, old-fashioned war film. And for me, there's nothing wrong in that. So, what about my little score then? Well, the poster got seven, didn't it? The poster got seven out of ten. Uh, I like the film. I do like the film. And I nearly, nearly gave it a slightly higher score. But I'm going to make it a draw. I'm going to make it a half-foot draw today. I'll give, I'll give the film a good good solid 7 out of 10 I say the post is a good solid 7 out of 10 I could have easily given both 8 out of 10 but you know me I'm quite mean anyway but uh, I think to give the film or the poster more than each one is a little bit unfair um, I, th I think that poster is excellent and I think the film is still excellent even now even nearly 20 years later so there we go. I'm going to have a draw today. I'm going to be boring, sit on the fence and have a draw. Uh, just as a matter of interest, just in memorial, a little bit of trivia. Uh, one of the real-life officers who survived, survived the battle was Lieutenant Rick Rescoria, who is the main figure on the cover of General Moore's book, uh, on which the movie was based. A biography of Mr. Rescoria's very interesting life was published in the mid-2000s called Heart of a Soldier. He died in the 9-11 attacks while employed as head of security for Morgan Stanley, while making He's sure all of the company's employees had gotten out of the World Trade Center. Uh, he died, obviously, making sure they'd all got out, and they all they all had all the, all the people he was responsible for. So that's a um, in memory, a fan fantastic. What a what a character. And retired Lieutenant General Hal Moore himself died on February the tenth, twenty seventeen. So he sadly passed away then. Rest in peace and uh, fantastic, great great film. Uh, great poster hope you enjoyed that let me know in the comments what you think anyway what are we going to do this day have a great one look after yourselves look after your friends look after your families more importantly let's all look after each other till we meet here again on the film and TV channel or perhaps you have a flit across and have a look at my football channel the citizen channel whatever it is please all I ever ask is please stay safe everyone thanks for watching bye for now